Hello again. Well, it's been a while. It's finally got around to doing a video. Um, this isn't going to be one of my typical kind of videos. Um, I'm going to discuss some new workflow things that I've got going on. As you know, I've taken a bit of a hiatus for the last couple of years. Um, or at least the last year or so. Um, and I stopped taking in any jobs. And since then... I've been upgrading my system, buying some new gear, um, going from Firewire to my the radar PCI card. Um, I've also got in front of me, I've got a few new toys, excuse wobbly cam. I've tried to put a camera over the top of me, but it just keeps flopping. So anyway, I'm going to do wobbly cam. So just so you can see, I've invested in the, the Behringer x touch one. Um, and the sorry SSL UC1 as well to kind of simplify my workflow and to do away with choice paralysis mainly to more than anything else so what I love about these I don't need the screen at the moment between these two viewports I can navigate my project get to where I need to get to and it's on the UC1 as well you know, as you can see, I can go right the way through the project to all my tracks, navigate. I've got my EQ and everything here. Easy peasy. And that's what I like. I've simplified my whole, although I spent a lot of money on these toys. So I'll make sure I put you back right. I've simplified the whole workflow. Now, by doing that, what I've done on every track now, as you'll see is if I get my ugly head out of the way hang on let me just move me um, as you see I've got Satson basically because it's uh, SSL emulation I've got it on fat mode and it gives me a little bit of um, extra harmonics but a bit of oomph and then of course the, the SSL native channel which works with the, the UCI um, how I've done that is I put these two on and then if you right click effects chains save all effects as default chain for new tracks so what that means is that every time I insert a track on here let me just show you I'll go to the bottom I'll put a new track at the bottom here for a double click new track comes up as you can see right at the bottom and on there automatically comes these two plugins set up as I left them okay so that's how I've done that so now um, every time I drag in like um, the wave files here for a session and it creates the new tracks these two plugins are on there so of course it's automatically ma matched to mixed um, match to the UC1 and as you can see, I've got the 360, it comes with the UC1, so I can go through with this to see my overall view of my mix, because I've got the SSL channel on every channel. Whether I'm using it or not, doesn't matter. At least by having it on every channel, it allows me to navigate via the, the SSL 360. Now, this isn't a, a review of these two bits of kit. It's more I'm talking about my new workflow and how I want to try and get into mixing again. Um, as I say, it's to do to get rid of um, choice paralysis. Well, I've got so many bloody plugins that I got to a point I was like, oh, I can't remember how did I do this? What did I do that? And I just thought, right, let's just keep it simple. So now I can navigate, use my EQ compression. It's all there at my fingertips, plus my bus compressors. I'm also using some hardware gear. Not, so I'm just kind of phasing that in at the moment. So for that, I'm using on my... On, uh, this is just a test mix. I got it from the um, the MT Cambridge website again that I've used before. Um, so it's just to try this kind of this thing out. So I've got uh, on my master bus here, I've got rear insert, which is going out to my radar 5 and 6 which is my DBX uh, compressor and coming back in on 5 and 6 inputs now there is a problem I found with this 
it works this way. Right, I'll play you a bit of the track. I'm going to actually I'll just pull up who it is because they have said it's not to be used for commercial purposes, but as my channel isn't monetized, hopefully they'll get the revenue. It's by Segan Jack Jacobson. Um, what have you done to me, is the track called. If I can find any info on them, I'll put some links in the description so you can check them out. So let's just play how it sounds. Now what I'm going to do, um, if I select all the tracks, I can now, using Alt 1 and 2, I can switch off channels 1 and 2, effects 1 and 2, in every track, sorry. Um, I want to switch off the effects on the submix, you'll see why in a minute. So if I just play, um, let me just find a, a section where everything's in. So let's uh, have a listen to it with the, both the Satsun and the SSL channel in. Better me, didn't need a man to feel completed. I'm going to switch them out now, switch out the Satsun first. What happened there was I've side chained the the um, the verb and the uh, the delay. So when I switched off effects one and two, it switched them off. So you that's why the, the reverb got swampy. But you kind of hear. I'll just play a little bit. Didn't need a man to feel completed. You clued me and what was missing. Yeah. That's without the SSL channel. We think this block will score your way of skating. Bring it back in. You got me lying here, believe. So that now on the whole of that mix is purely the SSL channel that I'm using for the EQ. Other than on the, the master channel, I've got, I'm messing about, I've just bought this fast equalizer from Focusrite and the fast, you know, fast bundle. And I'm just messing about with it a little bit. Now, my question comes, and some of you clever people in the Reaper world out there can maybe help me with this. If I know, what I like to do in my mixes, if you've seen any of my videos before, you understand, I, I like to have a sub mix which has got my effects on it then if I want to use any comparison tracks I'll have a, a, a separate track like say for example the master is that separate track with my tracks that I want to use as um, references so that means it's not th that those reference tracks aren't going through my master bus effects so but by having the effects on the master bus at the moment if I have a reference track in the in between the sub mix and the, the master track they, they'll then go through my those effects and it you know basically blows the whole thing out of the water so let's switch the effects on on the sub mix and off on the master I'll switch them on here now leave out reinsert for the moment you'll see why in a second so if we play Okay. Now, let me bring in reinsert. This only happens when it's a folder track. If I use this as a send track and send everything to it instead of a folder track, it'll work. But if now if I switch in reinsert, this is what happens. Nothing. Switch it off. I don't know why that is. If any of you guys know, please help me out here. Um, so then if I then switch them off, I'll have to switch them all off if I'm doing the comparison shit, and switch them back on on the master. Better me, didn't need a man feel there, completed. On the master track, and it works it fine. Just and press it. Press it. And coming back in. On its own, it's, it works fine. I'm, I'm wondering if it's something to do with the, the latency compensation. As soon as I put in another, you know, bring them all in, there we go. Now it works. Yeah. 
saw before it didn't before. I can't want to say to you guys If any of you guys know, it'd be nice if you could help me out. So this is what I, you know, the point of this video is just mainly to kind of have a little discussion about workflow, what works for you. I mean, I've had control surfaces before. I've got two BCFs in there and I would map effects to them and then I just could, would never remember, you know, and decide I wanted to change the effect and the, the, the job of having to map them all again is just a nightmare. Whereas this limits the choices that I've got, makes me work with one set of plugins. So I've got the bus compressors and the, the channel strip. And obviously sats and I put in there for a little bit of colour because these, these SSL plugins are very clean. Don't believe what they tell you. They are very, very clean. I've, I've tested them in Plugin Doctor. But that's it, guys. Just a, a quick little video there. If any of you have got any ideas what it is that's going on with this free insert. Now, you saw that it worked at the end. Let's just see if it will still work. No, now it's dropping out. Whereas if I switch everything off again... Let's try what I did before. So now it's playing. We're going to put it in re-insert. Play. Now it's dropping out. But you saw before it was working before. I, I just can't work this out. And the only thing I can think of is it's to do with the delay compensation. Because you see there's quite a lot of high and additional delay on that. Anyway. Just a quick one guys. Just to say hello again. Let you know what I've been doing where I'm kind of going with my setup. I'm still looking for premises so that I can start up again. I'm in my little apartment at the moment. Um, those of you know, that, know, that know what's going on, know what's going on. I'm not going to elaborate on it. But yeah, so I'm kind of trying to push towards a new way of working. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've got any ideas on what's going on with Ria Insert on a folder track. Um, and I'll see you next time for a more thorough, proper video. Thanks guys, see you soon, bye.